Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. Disclaimer. Token Metrics Media LLC does not provide individually tailored investment advice and does not take a subscriber's or anyone's personal circumstance into consideration when discussing investments, nor is it registered as an investment advisor or broker dealer in any jurisdiction. Information contained herein is not an offer or solicitation to buy, hold, or sell any security. The Token Metrics team has advised and invested in many blockchain companies. A complete list of their advisory roles and current holdings can be viewed here at tokenmetrics.com slash disclosures. All right, all right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Monty Metzger, who's the CEO of LCX. They're building a security token exchange. Uh, so without further ado, we would like to welcome him on the show. Monty, how are you? Hello. Hello, Ian. Hello, everybody. I'm very well. I'm fine. And I'm reading you in from the heart of Crypto Valley. I'm in our office in Zouk today. All right. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So uh, welcome on the show, the 100X show. Uh, so we'll be taking questions from directly from the audience. This is going out to both YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, Facebook. This also gets turned into a podcast as well. So be sure to subscribe, like, and share this video to just kind of expand the reach as we as we take crypto mainstream and evangelize crypto to, to the world. So if you have any questions you would like to ask, please go to minty.com. That's 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 M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 217946. That's 217946 to submit your questions to Monty. So any question you have in regards to LCX and the exchange, just go directly here and we'll take input directly from the community worldwide. All right, so with that being said, if anybody's having any issues with the audio or anything, just please uh, post in the chat, but everything is fine. Okay, so with that being said, Monty, uh, so tell us, who, who is Monty Metzger? So I'm an entrepreneur by heart and I'm now CEO uh, and founder of LCX based in Liechtenstein in the heart of Europe. And um, yeah, that's uh, kind of my key focus at the moment. But I had been an entrepreneur since the 90s. I founded a couple of uh, digital internet companies back then. And then um, when I exited um, my last company, I started to become so, an investor. So I started out as a business angel and then turned into a professional venture capitalist. So we had a venture capital fund and we invested in a couple of exciting companies uh, on, a, on a very international level. And now I've shifted sides again um, to start my own venture. And this was 2017 and we incorporated early 2018 at uh, with LCX AG and that's based in Liechtenstein. Okay. Okay. So let's take a step back. Right. Um, back to the 90s. So what was your first company? Can, can you kind of maybe go into more in depth in, in terms of why you formed that company, what you were working on, what things you liked about it? Yeah. So it was actually a time while I had been at my kind of last two years at, at school, at high school in, in Germany. And we had been hanging out at um, a friend's advertising agency and they had um, super fast um, Mac computers, uh, Macintosh, uh, Quadra 800, and, and all like these old models. And um, we had been hanging out there. And then a client came in and said, we need a website. And um, the only two who had any clue about any HTML and programming were like me and my friend. So that's where we got started, actually programming basic websites, uh, did HTML and PHP programming back in the days and we did, um, yeah, start out the first kind of internet agency doing websites for companies. Okay, wow. so so pretty much you were building websites very early on. That's okay. right, yeah. Okay, so what was life then after the dot-com? So basically there was a dot-com bubble where there's lots of massive interest and, and also speculation when it came to investing in dot-coms and just tech stocks in general. Uh, and then it kind of peaked, then it collapsed. 
Uh, but after that, that collapsed, there are basically a few companies that still ended up, uh, I would say, ended up winning, right? So kind of talk about that and maybe talk about how that compares to what's happening in blockchain and crypto. Yeah, absolutely. So I've seen in my career a couple of ups and downs. Um, first of all, the dot-com uh, crash or the, the, the new economy hype, let's say this way. Um, then also, of course, the financial crisis of 2008. And we've seen kind of the rise and fall of value of, of Bitcoin going up and down. So, um, you know, I've learned how to um, differentiate between a fad and like a hype and something which is substantially changing. And that's why I also became so addicted and interested in blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies um, as I started out um, kind of exploring the whole field back in uh, 2013. Um, but uh, I immediately kind of noticed that this is something which is here to stay. And um, looking back to kind of the new economy hype back 2099, um, there's still a couple of companies who had been tremendous successful, but a lot of them had been replaced. And similar, like 2005, 6, 7, when social media came across, everybody was on Friendster and MySpace, and now kind of Facebook um, took over the, the market there. Um, and I assume it will be very similar in this regard. So we've seen the first rise of kind of blockchain and crypto companies, exchanges growing. And I assume for the next five to 10 years, these will not be the ones who would be successful. It will be coming a next generation. And we are just in the middle of that, building this kind of next generation of a, of a crypto assets exchange. Okay, okay. All right, so for those who are just joining, uh, please go to menti.com, that's M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 217946, that's 217946 to ask your questions. So any questions you have for Monty, please go there and put, um, and put them there. Okay, so, so Monty, let's, so you, you mentioned you got into blockchain and crypto in 2013, you said? Right. right? So, so, that, so that's pretty early. Kind of walk us through that story of you discovering crypto and just kind of how your, your life changed. Yes, so um, early 2003, I started a futurist um, company, a future and market research company. So we had been exploring all new technology trends early on. We did reports for large companies. We did a lot of things around um, e-banking and, and, and things for banking institutions as well. And um, based on that knowledge and also with the background, I had been known to be a futurist uh, in, in that regard. And 2013, we hosted an event in San Francisco um, called Digital Leaders, where I invited um, Adam Draper to speak. And he uh, and, and, and I, we, we met previously um, in the same week around, and I had been exploring Bitcoin and blockchain um, just like in that whole year. You know, 2013, the price increased dramatically, and then it dropped, I think, from like 1000 to $100, and everybody thought it's, it's dead. And, and I published the Bitcoin landscape um, back in the days with Mt. Gox and wallet providers on my personal blog, monty.de. Um, and um, then the discussion we had with Adam during the time really accelerated my thinking and um, brought up, uh, kind of opened my mind and said, okay, there's, uh, it's more substantial than I thought. Um, and we had been exploring with the VC fund then to go into um, this new asset class. But as a regulated venture capital fund, like 2014, it was basically impossible. I mean, we could take some risk with special purpose vehicles, but with the regulated entity, we could not invest. And now with the rise of new regulatory infrastructure, um, that was really the trigger point where I see now it's the right time to build the next generation uh, of a crypto assets exchange which is um, fully compliant and regulated and um, takes the, kind of the whole industry to the next level. And that's the, the core reason which kind of triggered back 2013, where I said, well, that's interesting, but, but how can we get started on a more kind of compliant basis? Um, and we could not, and now it's the right time to actually build that. Um, and it's also, I think, now uh, the right time to bring it from kind of a niche market to, to a mass market. And we see all the development happening in, in the markets right now. So it's, it's a very exciting moment in time, I think. Okay, uh, well said, well said. So so now tell people, uh, what is LCX 
exactly. A and why is it something they would like to use? Mm -hmm. So LCX, first of all, it stands for Liechtenstein Crypto Assets Exchange. So the L in the name comes from our jurisdiction where we're based. We have um, the headquarter in Vaduz in the capital town of Liechtenstein. And we chose Liechtenstein because of the regulatory environment. We have there this new blockchain act, which is in full force since January this year. And it gives us a, the perfect environment as a kind of building a new token economy. So that's the L. Um, and then we spotted the opportunity of um, security tokens and kind of more compliant and regulated tokens. Um, while establishing an infrastructure which could be also used and leveraged for, for basic utility tokens or payment tokens as well. And as, as plus, uh, we thought about how to enter the market the right way. And we've built, um, so we've created a kind of a three-step process. So the first one is what is out in the market at the moment at lcx.com, which is LCX Terminal. And that's a sophisticated trading interface where you can connect up to 16 different exchanges. You have right next to the tradings and, and markets, you can uh, have a news desk, you have reporting, you have deep analysis of everything, what you do of your portfolio, and then you can trigger trades. And there's also something which got uh, a lot of attention recently, which is LCX Smart Order, where you can trigger uh, trades automatically and then always get the best price across all these exchanges. So that's kind of the first step. We are now at more than 60,000 um, active users who are all kind of pro traders. So in average, there are three exchanges connected and they're all exposed. How many, sorry, how many people, how many uh, users do you have? More than 60,000. More than 60,000? Wow, so in, in uh, what time frame has that been? About two years? Um, so we started out in June, and so it's uh, now like a, almost a, or a little bit than a year. Mm -hmm. um, but the big growth really came when we introduced our uh, token, the utility token. Um, so its growth really came from December, January this year. And we saw kind of the last six months had been really um, tremendously successful in that regard. Okay. Now, what regions do you cater to? So this is a software as a service technology. So we are not facilitating any trades on ourselves, uh, um, but you're just managing the crypto assets. So that's why we uh, okay. can offer that globe, um, internationally. So there are no limitations. So, so, At the so, same so, time, so I'm sorry, go, go on. Yeah, I think what is important to understand. So that's kind of, um, if you're building um, like an eBay marketplace or kind of a NASDAQ for crypto, you need um, good, like you need a, a trading community. And that's what we're building up with LCX Terminal. So we have more than 60,000 people who are all willing to invest and expose to crypto assets. And now the second phase, which we are now starting, is to tokenize uh, everything we find is interesting um, in on our STO launchpad and launching security token offerings. So build assets. And the, and the f third phase is then once we have substantial volumes there it makes sense to then open up the exchange um, and then have the marketplace but you know building exchange is a chicken egg problem so you need traders you need good access assets and then uh, it makes sense to open the trading platform okay but an, an empty ebay is not exciting and then it's like a filled ebay without any users uh, as well so um, mm. that's kind of a well i mean so in terms of the the sto and the security tokens um that's not software as a service that's that's you basically offering that on your platform does that have restrictions in, in terms of jurisdiction it does so it depends on each asset which we are launching um so we've built out a, a compliant technology platform combined with a legal tool set and that's pretty important because there are a few kind of white label solutions if you want to do an sto you can like take their technology, but they leave you in the dark with the legal aspects. And we combine that. And also the kind of the legal aspects are very um, naturally integrated in the platform itself. So we see that, the, um, for example, some compliant elements need to be implemented on a token level or in a platform level. And that's something which we can fulfill. And now we are kind of building up the pipeline for a variety of um, STOs and and therefore, LCX becomes a token issuing platform where we handle and work with the project for all aspects to build a prospectus or a 
public offering memorandum um, to kind of the token generation, the token issuing, and then offering it at lcx.com. And, and one kind of aspect is that um, all the users um, who are registered there can then um, with a one click subscribe to these STOs as well. So they already, everybody who's already verified can then subscribe there. Um, and then it comes down to the jurisdiction level. So some offerings will be only available for the EEA region, the European Economic Area, um, excluding Asia and US and some others where we are now exploring to also open uh, up for US citizens and for other jurisdictions as well. But this needs to be taken then um, project so, by project. So, so, to, so could you maybe kind of just re re recap that? So for people in the US, you, it's kind of project by project, country by country. Uh, like, like is, do, do, is there a list on the site that kind of shows the different regions, people that can currently use the platform, especially when it comes to the STOs? So, so we're just finalizing um, a, a few key documents there, which we are reflecting with the regulator um, and uh, our legal um, compliance team to publish that. And then um, once that's announced, um, you will have a full kind of um, offering memorandum um, kind of a public uh, PPM uh, structure, very similar to that, where you can see these countries are allowed, these ones, there, there are some restrictions, and then you can also um, review all the terms in detail. We will always structure it in kind of a more summary basis, plus kind of the full legal documents, which is typically between 60 and 100 uh, pages um, with all the risk exposure and everything. Okay, all right. So you mentioned you also had a demo for us. So maybe we, we pull that up. Yeah, if, yeah. If you have some time. We show this to you. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm now switching. If you like over. the demo, uh, definitely be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and share this video. Excellent. So when you um, sign up, you first, um, first touch point is the accounts page. So that's L6 accounts. You can see that um, there are currently three wallets, which automatically are activated for each users, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and an LCX token or utility token. Uh, and then uh, you can see kind of your account status and, and you can also um, participate in some marketing activities there. Um, then there is another kind of second section, which is our like mini oh, exchange at the moment so you can convert and buy LCX token there at any time. Um, directly, so that's also actually uh, open for U.S. citizens as of now, and um, everybody who's who's verified can then uh, purchase LCX directly in our site at market price. But what is very unique is we've set up um, a guaranteed um, minimum value of the token, which is ten cent. So um, once you are um, in the product and you want to pay, pay the subscription, for example, for LCX terminal, you will then um, be charged with the value of 10 cent. So for example, the LCX uh, terminal subscription is $290 and you pay 2,900 LCX token for that. So in this way, we have kind of a, um, okay. integrated in a way that the token um, is, can be seen as a voucher. So, uh, kind, kind of what, a so, so what time frame is that, the, the payment? Is that annually or...? Um, you mentioned 2000 monthly. monthly? It's okay. Monthly, yeah. You can see. Um, so, two, so, over, two, so, so, okay. So, basically, 200 bucks a month to access the platform. Ex exactly. So, it's 290. Um, but obviously, everybody who is uh, owner of LCX token um, has a and discount. Has bought token over here or there gets a huge, huge discount. So, at the moment, it's like more than 90% discount on this. So, uh, yeah, we, we don't earn much um, in that regard, but uh, we earn tokens. Uh, so we incentivize really that everybody's using the token in the in our infrastructure and in our platform. How's the token earned? Just by but trading? It's um, just by trading. Um, so you can just buy it as a utility token, um, either here on our platform or in one of the exchanges like on liquid.com or in IDEX markets. Um, and then you can use it here at LCX on, on our platform. Now the, now the token is an ERC-20 token? It's a standard ERC-20 token, yeah. Um, okay. And um, yeah, there's not, not much special behind it, yeah. 
Okay, continue. So, and then um, you jump like from here, um, you can jump on products, um, L6 terminal. And as you can see, we plan to do a little bit more than just one product. So this is, um, this is the first one, which is live. And it's a sophisticated trading interface. So you can see, you can connect up to 16 exchanges. So these are kind of the different uh, test accounts we have here. If you go and add exchange, you can simply then choose another exchange you wanna, you wanna connect. And um, you can see the balance um, you have in this uh, account um, as an overview, but you can simply also go into trades and then facilitate um, different different trades on um, kind of Digifinex, Binex, um, whatever exchange you want to do. Um, and then also on markets page, you can do deep analysis of uh, each asset. And um, let's see if this is uh, loading here the right way. And um, there, what is very unique, we have the full history, trading history of a, of a particular asset. So you can really go uh, deep into the analysis. You can see it's... Um, um, yeah, so, so trading via integration. Really that, that's one thing. Then um, next to it, you have the news desk. So you can either see it as a kind of a list of things or with nice tiles. So there's a kind of the most important news at your fingertips. You have a, a detailed reporting page where you can see how the portfolio had been performing. Uh, hopefully it's going up like this all the time. Um, and then what I have been uh, mentioning also, we sometimes do trading competitions. So there's nothing running at the moment. And there's a price alert. And what is pretty cool, you can also get price alert on Telegram here if you uh, want to choose that. And last but not least, and probably the of a new feature which we uh, launched this year is LCX Smart Order, and that's where we've seen a lot of um, increase of interest. So you can see um, all the connected exchanges you're running. You can uh, go and sell it and buy, and then you can immediately see kind of the best bid and best ask of each asset. And then if you go kind of in, in, in past uh, transactions, you can see then, uh, for example, this had been executed here on KuCoin uh, directly. Sometimes if you don't have enough assets on the uh, changes and uh, sometimes splitting. So um, like here on Hubi or KuCoin uh, immediately. So there is some um, um, kind of smart algorithm behind that you always get the best price. And um, yeah, so that's LCX Terminal. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, definitely uh, interesting overview. So one question I do have, uh, so, so, so for those who also would like to ask questions, uh, please go to menti.com. So M E N T I.com. The code is 217946. That's 217946. And once again, that's M E N T I.com to ask your questions. Okay. All right. So, one question I do have for you. So, looking at the platform, it is pretty cool that, you, that a, prof, a professional trader can go on the platform. And basically trade across various exchanges and it has the smart order routing right so is this in a way competing with togomi that, that was purchased by coinbase recently good question good question so at the moment this is um uh, kind of a self um catering service so you have to set up accounts at the um, certain exchanges and then you can connect with the apis what togomi did is they are a prime broker and that's exactly something uh, which we're working on at the moment. So we'd like to um, facilitate um, a different way of trading that you sign up only once at our account with LCX, you deposit funds there, and then you can trade. And that's in the process at the moment. And one of our kind of key milestones with LCX terminal that um, once we uh, got this approvals and become kind of a, uh, a prime broker, we will be able then to just unlock that um, uh, very simply. So the technology is already there and the licensing process is running at the moment. Okay. All right. Uh, and then my next question. So I, I in the past have used market makers to, to basically sell OTC where you basically get them, let's say you, you have a crypto that you would like to sell or, or buy without having to move the price on exchanges. So could this also be used to, to do that? Like, is it in a way replacing having to sell OTC or to market makers to, to avoid uh, kind of the, the 
inefficiencies around having to sell uh, on one one exchange? Mm -hmm. um, partly yes, because you could split the trades across multiple exchanges that you're not influencing it, and um, so in terms of liquidity management, it's really something which is reducing risk in a way because you're not exposed to one particular exchange um, and, and you're splitting it up. At the, at the same time, you're touching, I think, two very interesting aspects which are also um, being developed by our development team at the moment. Um, the first thing is we are working on smart bots, um, including an arbitrage bot and a market making bot. So there will be like on the left side, next to smart order, there will be um, a different tab where you can then activate and subscribe to um, smart bots. This is developed uh, into, together with a very experienced trading team uh, called System9. Uh, they, uh, with the founder coming from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, like big trading uh, history and really one of these gray-haired um, trading experts, helping a lot to build that smart bot and integrating it here. And the second aspect is the partnership which we announced with Luna Crush where we're getting uh, social signals right here next to this news desk. Um, and there we will be, um, as far as we know, kind of the first trading platform who will be integrating social signals right uh, next to the market space. Okay. And then could you also talk about your, is it partnership with Binance? Yeah, I can, I can give you the, the full background here. So we've started out um, 2018 uh, working with Binance. Um, in that regard, we wanted to help them to set up an entity in Liechtenstein. And um, we did. So we did um, kind of uh, did a lot of legal work and um, compliance work to make sure everything is um, proper for a fiat on ramp. Uh, back in the days, Binance wanted to do like 20 different fiat on ramp on and off ramps. And um, so there was a company incorporated in Liechtenstein, which is a subsidiary of almost um, completely majority owned by Binance, a small part by LCX. And um, this partnership completely failed, <laughs> I have to say. So we lost a lot of uh, money and uh, efforts and um, I got some more gray hair uh, around it. So um, we learned a lot and especially around compliance and regulation, it's tough to turn a, kind of a, one of the market leaders around um, to, to make them uh, kind of compliant and, and regulated and, and it failed. And um, so basically as a startup, you know, there are always um, setbacks and failures and um, mm -hmm. the ability for us was really, how uh, can we overcome it as, as quickly as possible? And then we had to kind of reset um, the company uh, back in 2018 and um, early 2019, we, we did a kind of a fresh start uh, launching okay. L6 Terminal and really focus on our own um, aspects and, and choosing the partners very um, selectively and very wisely now. So okay, now, but questions. Learning, so learning experience and, um, and yeah, kind of uh, as, a, as a technology startup, sometimes you have um, set mix yeah. as well, which you have. Okay. Yeah, now was that, was that due to regulation or, I mean, what was the, the exact challenge in, in terms of bringing Binance to, to that region? Well, there are several aspects to it and I, I don't want to go into detail, but um, at, at the end of the day, um, Liechtenstein has a very high reputation. It has a triple A rating at Standard & Poor's and the regulator, the government and, and us, as we have Liechtenstein in name, is protecting this high reputation very heavily and we can't um, let anything kind of, kind of just let go or, or be not very precise. So everything which we do now is um, uh, goes very deep in terms of regulation and compliance. And um, I think that this was kind of a, one of the key aspects why this uh, had been not working out um, the right way. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. So let's, let's take some questions from the audience here. So just Absolutely. give me... Just give me one one second here to to go through the questions. Uh, okay, so here's one from the audience. Uh, so why the hesitation on a tier one exchange after you said you would be listing on one? Mm -hmm. So um, that's in regards to our listing strategy and adoption of LCX um, token. 
no um, token had been listed at liquid um, in October last year. And since then, we added a variety of different different exchanges. I have to say that the teamwork with, with Liquid is, is very healthy and good. They've been also now um, complying with new, the new Singapore regulation. Another kind of very strong partner is IDEX. And um, as you probably have heard, um, they're building IDEX 2.0. And there's, there's also some news coming out in regards to um, our partnership with them over there. So um, I think we are strengthening our partners, uh, Liquid and, and IDEX. Um, then there are some new um, exciting exchanges like um, Bydesk, for example, which we also are closely engage with the CEO. And they have an incredible good technology and we are kind of exploring what else we could do with this kind of fast growing exchange. And then obviously what we said also in, in the last AMA, I did tier one uh, exchanges, additional tier one exchanges coming we already see liquid as a as a tier one exchange and idex i think as a as the leading dex uh, also as a as a tier one exchange but we want to have additional ones and there are discussions ongoing i can't comment on it uh, we have a few documents on the table from from some of the exchanges and we are just negotiating um and also it is kind of a high priority for us to get that um uh, yeah then announced soon but there's no time frame for it Okay. Um, now, I mean, I do have a few other follow-up questions. So looking here on CoinMarketCap, there are, I would say, several exchanges that the platform has. Uh, I also see, do you have a liquidity pool for the token, the LCX token? Mm -hmm. Uniswap? Yeah, like a, your, own, your own pool, or is that maybe just other users that have established that? Um, we support with market making, so we are not taking part in any active trades or something like that. This would be kind of market manipulation. But what we do is um, standard market making, similar to all the st stock exchanges as well. Mm -hmm. So we provide liquidity on both sides uh, of the trades. And um, in, in particular, uh, we are focusing now on the kind of main exchanges at the moment to provide a good trading liquidity on the order book and kind of deepening um, the volumes over there. And we've seen. Uh, a good increase in, in volume over the last uh, two months. Uh, and overall, the development since January was really tremendous. I think everybody who had been involved with the, with the token itself um, had been, uh, yeah, kind of, uh, I think it was very positive development, let's say it this way. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we really see adoption also because our, the token is a very good marketing instrument. Everybody who's first like came across LCX token said, okay, what can I do with it? They sign up at LCX.com. They use our trading platform. And then with the things to come, I think there's um, a huge interest at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Now, is there some overlap in terms of what you do with, I think uh, it's called Swissborg, which is also building some kind of, uh, I think, Fiat on ramp that connects into several several exchange trading platforms. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what Swissport is, is doing. At least they have something in common, which is an office in Zook. So I mean, <laughs> you know, in Zook at, the, at the moment. But I I don't know all the details over there. What we see is that there are a, a few um, security token platforms and issuing platforms um, being created. I think Tokenai. Uh, is doing a great job. Also, Securitize, of course, all Israel uh, community there and founders are um, very strong. Polymass, uh, T0, and so on. Um, but it, most of them are focusing on the technology side and solution. Um, there's also a, a kind of tremendous um, smart technology platform in Liechtenstein called We Own. Um, they are focusing on SMEs, so kind of small, middle sized companies tokenizing their shares and everything. So the platform is very sophisticated, um, but what is really a bottleneck, and that's where we really emphasize is on the legal aspects of it. Um, so you need to set up um, and leverage the legal infrastructure as well, because once you're going in a regulated security token or digitalized um, financial asset, uh, you need to uh, have certain licenses and to also um, make sure that the trading and the management of the whole token is compliant. And that's, I think, where we really stand out, um, having that combined. And we're not letting anything um, on our platform onboard. So it's not like a self-service. 
but rather um, at the moment we are taking it project by project. We are evaluating, uh, looking at these projects and it, therefore also my experience as a venture capitalist is very helpful uh, because we know how to uh, do the diligence on the project, go deep and really see that we offer something which is not only a good investment but actually something which is um, super uh, successful hopefully in the, in the future. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, so moving on to the next questions. Uh, let me just go through this real quick. Give me a second. Okay, I think let's avoid the, the price questions. Okay, yeah, so we have given you guys action. People were, were asking uh, on the demo. So we have done that. Um, okay, so... One aspect to the to the demo, uh, which I just wanted to sh um, also share is... Okay. Is what is something which is currently online um, on our platform uh, as well is the um, price services, and that's something pretty uh, interesting. Uh, at first, like when we announced it, everybody thought, "Okay, what's what's this all about?" But we have we are publishing uh, four price services at the moment: so uh, a Bitcoin reference price in euro and US dollars, as well as the Ethereum reference price in euro and Use dollars. You can see that there's always published like three historical dates for it, and it's calculated and um, based on the kind of a deep methodology report on how we do this, um, how we calculate it. And there is a price every day, and that's okay. pretty important because it's a fundamental basis for any future project. For the technology development which we are now doing, we are actually already using these kind of price oracles. Um, for for our future products and uh, as you know the cme in in chicago had been building the bitcoin futures also based on a reliable price the key difference here is that this is part of our role as a price service provider which is a regulated role under the blockchain act in Liechtenstein. so therefore as far as we know we're the only licensed price service provider kind of an official price so, and, and why does it matter? It matters, so, for example, if you buy a real estate with Bitcoin, you probably uh, have like a paper contract or uh, any, anything you sign and you put in um, a conversion rate. And if the conversion rate can be manip manipulated in any way, um, then the whole contract would fall apart. And this is very important if you tokenize any assets in the future, that you have something which is, um, reliable and enforceable and where you can go back in time and say like what was the conversion date rate on that day and given the fact um, that the blockchain act is now in full force token buyers token purchases then have a lot of rights so like it's an investor protection in a way and they can basically go to the court of Liechtenstein and, and enforce their rights so if there's something going wrong um, there's a, a pure like a real a risk um, uh, kind of overview clarity uh, in terms of legal rights and then also can be enforced. And I think that's a key part here. And what we are now currently working on is exploring some other partnerships on how we could uh, make it more public to other developers as well. Um, so we are currently putting every all the data in our own database, but um, there are some ideas and there might be um, something coming up um, also okay. there future. now quick question so somebody in the comments is asking or commenting uh, this seems kind of like a price oracle kind of like chain link uh, so could you maybe kind of compare the two yes so so chain link does aggregate um, data providers so they're getting their um, kind of information from reliable sources like even from Bloomberg um, or kind of other uh, partners and then they uh, make it kind of uh, in the, put it on their on the chain link blockchain make it available in a single API request so it's very um, neat and fast to implement within um, development projects and that's I think a pretty smart approach and um, we are uh, looking at a couple of kind of price oracles and 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 solutions over there um, to provide our data source also in a, in a more public way. Um, at the moment, it is like published on our website, but there's no way that you can implement it 
in uh, in an uh, API request immediately. So that's something we're we're exploring, um, and we are just talking to to a couple of these uh, kind of blockchain um, public blockchains where we could probably publish um, the, the price there there as well. So I think that the idea is there. Um, it's all about priorities and focus, and um, so we're exploring some some ideas, but. Uh, also, the core focus for us is really to get the STO launchpad filled with exciting projects. That's key priority. Um, getting all the legal work done, the testing, and uh, the whole compliance infrastructure going deep in KYC and ML checks and everything which we what we have to do over there. Okay, so so one other question I, I have. So if an American product wants to launch on your STO platform, what do they need? Is it just like a Reg D, a Reg A plus? What's the requirement for other companies outside of the that region? Yeah. So, the, so the first step, if you're interested to tokenize um, something with a security token, uh, you can reach out to us. We have hello at ltx.com as a touch base. There's also a form at the website STO Launchpad which you can fill out. So, and then we'll we'll take a look. So, at the moment, we are selectively onboarding uh, projects. And um, there we really see it um, as kind of the investor perspective and the token purchaser perspective, because we want to launch something which everybody wants. So for example, if somebody comes with an ugly painting from an artist nobody knows, mm -hmm. it can be tokenized, but, but who cares? Nobody will buy it. And a lot of these projects which we currently seen in the market are very similar. So um, I don't know, there's, a cattle farm being tokenized or a real estate project, but it's hard to market it if there's not a community already. So that's why we focus on uh, on the team, on the company. We look in like what will be tokenized and, and the most important part is really, is there an investor community? Is there an interest to invest? And then um, our role would be really to unlock uh, the potential there and say, okay, we have the kind of legal aspect to it, the, the tokenization engine uh, on our technology side. And then we can unlock that and make it available to investors who already like be, be thrilled to if it would be in the market already. And um, we hope that we have identified some of these projects uh, already. So some are in the entertainment and film industry where obviously there's a huge uh, outreach of um, due to the celebrities involved in the movies. Um, then we're looking at gaming, entertainment, and also in some, some companies um, where we could tokenize um, some assets of a, of a company or future profits, for example. Um, but there needs to be a need. Like if it's um, just be, because of the purpose of tokenizing anything, I think it won't be successful. Um, so that's, that's one part of, the, of your um, question. The second part you ask around what is needed on the regulatory side. So the companies come to us and then we, we help them go through the whole process. What we do is we issue the tokens under the Liechtenstein Blockchain Act and the regulatory basis in Liechtenstein, um, which gives us a framework which regulates from the token issuing to token generation, custodianship and everything. So there are 10 roles there in this laws, um, which um, kind of uh, describe the whole value chain of tokenization. And uh, we go through these aspects and do it on behalf of uh, our client in that regard, in regards, on behalf of this project. Um, and then we already have um, kind of a, a good legal basis to offer that uh, within Europe. And for the US, um, we are exploring ways of um, doing a Reg D or a Reg A plus, um, or like other, other ways, depending on the size of the, of the offering. Um, but first priority is to get it right um, over here in Europe, uh, and then as, as a second step, uh, also in the US. All right, sounds great. Okay, so let's check in with our audience in the comments and just see how we're doing here. Yeah. So this is going out to YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. So wherever you are, if you like this stream, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So quick what's up alpha diallo welcome on the stream stan the man chitago dan welcome welcome to the stream imran as c steve welcome we have crypto adventure on twitter 
we have a wow so lots of people are, are here on the stream okay awesome uh okay let me see if i can okay so let's take a comment from youtube from crypto brands so he's asking what are your plans to expand could you kind of maybe delve deeper into this in terms of expansion plans yeah okay so um probably to answer this question let me go one step back and i think what is what is dear to my heart is i've seen um so many startups um developing in europe but they uh, a lot of them have been very successful in the us in silicon valley because there's an infrastructure where you have risk capital you have people who are really betting at a topic and then you get much more capital but there are some um, companies in europe who really stand out because they hustle more they try more and they uh, um, uh, basically build a more sustainable business model and what we've seen in the blockchain and crypto sphere in the past years it's really that um, the business models are not so sustainable they are typically are based on just ideas and not on making it reality that's why our focus really is on delivering a step-by-step -step approach and really taking it from an entrepreneurial perspective to build a sustainable business so, so what does it mean we have a vision obviously to tokenize any asset asset to build a security token exchange and then do much more in terms of, of financial um, future financial assets and everything but the core is that we need to build up a business which where we generate revenues where we have happy clients so that's where we're exploring the first step is the l6 terminal building that second is now building rolling out assets which are exciting where everybody is happy to invest and also where they get a good return of investment um, and these projects are successful so this is really our our core element and at the same time i've been talking about how can we engage and um, improve the functionalities of l6 terminal so that's what we are doing as well with bots social signals and everything so um, improving the existing product and then obviously uh, what i think you can imagine is that l6 terminal is already a, a perfect trading interface it has everything what you need for an exchange so going into this pro prime brokerage role to um, offer um, trading across multiple exchanges with one account is, is one key element another element um, which we're working on is really the security token exchange itself but this only makes sense to launch once we have liquidity and good assets also to to list on so it is really the moment um, an exciting moment in time where european companies could stand out it really doesn't matter if you're in silicon valley or elsewhere anymore and with the regulation we have here in Liechtenstein and all the projects here in Crypto Valley in, in Switzerland, it's really um, the opportunity for Digital Europe to stand out. And that's what we are trying to, to do. And actually the tool you're using, Menti, is also from a very smart um, Swedish entrepreneurial team. I know them very well and um, had been looking at that um, during my time as a, as a VC. It's a fantastic company and, you know, a lot of, um, success story which you can't, would not even believe on are born in Europe, like Spotify, Red Bull, the energy drink, uh, and so on. So, so a few good examples, and we hope that we will be um, among one of these successful companies now coming out of Europe. All right. So let's check in with the audience again and pick a question. Uh, Elias in Toys says hello, Crypto Dreamers on Twitter. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sergey says, "Perfect, awesome stream. Ready, ready to share. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, okay, just give me a second here. Okay, so people are asking when the Wesley Snipes Daywalker Fund STL will be released. I'm not sure. If, is that a, a real thing? <laughs> it's a real thing. Yeah." <laughs> Um, oh, it is? <laughs> okay. So, so uh, we are we're closely working with Wesley Snipes, this whole production team and everything um, since uh, September last year or even, even, even longer. But we announced it in, I think, September, October last year that we are uh, collaborating officially. And we had been uh, working on a, on a prospectus for 25 million um, security token project. 
And this will be so-called the DMA, so the Daywalker Movie Assets Token, and it will give you right for future profits of movies um, Wesley Snipes and his team is producing or where they're involved. So um, there I had been a company or which is in cooperation at the moment or information, um, which is Daywalker AG. It's a Liechtenstein-based um, production house, which we uh, only incorporated for the purpose of um, producing uh, movies. And the production house is now issuing this uh, security token um, together with us. And um, so it's really uh, for us, it, it took also much longer than we, than we um, thought it would be, but um, it's been a, a learning journey. And you know, with the first project we are creating out, we have to get it right. So we can't make any mistakes. So we'd rather take a little bit more time to make everything sure that it's um, right. But we invested a lot uh, to make that happen. And uh, I can see the finish line, I, I can tell you. So it's, uh, it's very exciting. Um, we're just thinking about when is the right time uh, to get it started. But um, there, like this fall um, also, and at the end of the year, there are some cool projects coming up. For example, I don't know if you watched um, Coming to America with Eddie Murphy and, and Wesley yes. Snipes. Um, I love the movie with Prince from Zamunda um, and things like that. So there's Coming to America times um, number two coming out and the premiere will be um, December 10 or something like that. So early, early December. Um, and um, so there, there are a few cool projects coming up. Unfortunately, Daywalker is not part of this movie, but um, hopefully in other movies, but you could imagine that the uh, potential profits of such a product or in security token can be really immense as we are um, enabling the first time that the audience and the fans can really be um, part of this movie production from the beginning till, till the end. And this is really what I, I said about unlocking interesting assets because the movie industry is like a hundred um, trillion dollar industry. Um, it's really a huge entertainment um, industry and there are uh, exciting assets which are or investments which are typically only accessible to large investors like either your your jack ma or uh, you you have a, a big production house or studio you can, you can invest but it's not for the the normal people and um the, the projects which are on like crowdfunding platforms are like amateur movies who are not really interesting you want to be in the next next uh, investor of black panther 2 or or something mm -hmm. that would be exciting or the next marvel movie or something like that and that's I think what, what we're trying to achieve there, uh, step by step. And um, yeah, to sum up, uh, we can see the, the finish line and it won't be the only film project. Um, we are also talking to, to another production art or like we signed documents there um, that's ongoing and um, there's some exciting things coming up. All right, sounds good, sounds good. Okay, all right, let's go back to Menti and see what other questions we have from the audience. Okay, so I think we, we, I think we covered who can participate in the STOs already during the show. Okay, so next question. Is it possible to add exchanges like Uniswap to the terminal, maybe in a different section? We're exploring opportunities to do that. Um, Uniswap and like IDEX are decentralized exchanges, so there's some complexity with it. But um, with IDEX 2.0, uh, as far as I know, very possible um, to do that because then the APIs are much more sophisticated. Uh, with with Uniswap, um, yeah, we, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, good idea, and we, we can take it to the kind of evaluation list. Yeah, I mean, now were you looking at version one or version two? of the platform version two version two okay yeah because i mean that's currently the most popular dex at the moment I mean, especially with all the d5 frenzy so i think if you guys are able to add that that would be a big win but yeah. but, but but obviously there is the the whole compliance issue with with that uh, DeFi. <laughs> okay all right yeah. uh, next question let me go through here okay the discount is great but are there any plans to adjust the tokenomics to further increase the value of the token 
in the ecosystem? Um, with the L6 token is structured as a utility token. And um, so therefore there are uh, no aspects of profit sharing or something tied to this particular token. It's really seen as a, as a voucher which you can use within the ecosystem. You can now use it to pay the subscription fee at L6 terminal, but in the future, there will be fees involved with um, trading assets. Um, there are fees for uh, um, subscribing um, security tokens. And um, they're like in every, everywhere we, there will be any fee, we also offer um, to pay with LCX and there will be discounts involved. So the utility functionality will be expanding. So also, we have been exploring some other ways or also we've seen partners which is accepting L6 token um, as well. And so th this is kind of uh, one aspect to it. The, the other aspect is all revenues we generate with the token. So if you pay your subscription now, you put it in the pool and then every quarter we burn 100% of these tokens. The reason for that is that we see it as a as a voucher. So if you go with you have a voucher to go in a cinema, you can also only use it once. So that's at the moment how we see the functionality that we, once we receive the payment of L6 token, we destroy it. We are publishing the token burns every quarter um, in full transparency. You can see so the um, kind of total supply is uh, going down. Now and is the total are, supply fixed? Or no? Um, it was 1 billion, 1 billion LCX token. Um, I think over 50% is really in, in circulating supply since uh, we started and uh, the token supply had been reduced to 900 uh, something million. Okay, so, uh, there, okay so, so if you're burning tokens every quarter, now is, is, that, is that also fixed or because can, can they happen so down the road, could you possibly run out of tokens? If basically, I'm asking. Yes, a good question. Oh, um, let me I think we lost switch over the camera. Um, that's that's a good question as well. So we uh, we had been thinking about um, that a lot, and at the moment, so we um, want to keep it as long as possible. In that regard, that we have the opportunity to do the token burns on, on a more longer time and the token economics which we published we said we do it at least for a year and then we see at the moment it works out quite fine so we basically uh, you know see that the metrics are, are um, the value is going up and then if you have a mathematical model so in theory um, we could keep burning without um, and the value will increase and then basically it, it, it could just like work out over, over the time but um, we are just looking at the kind of token economics and the mathematical models at the moment. It's no issue, um, but we might either reduce the percentage of burn or um, stop with the with the burns overall. So I think there are a few options there, but we really see all token holders as our um, community and our clients, our user base, and we want to serve them with um, um, great value and then also giving them opportunity to be part of our journey all right sounds good okay all right uh let's go on to the next question okay so this says the financial market authority lichtenstein fma points out that lcx ag the dues registration number when he puts a number FL dash whatever uh, has not been licensed by the FMA and has not submitted an authorization request. Mm -hmm. um, do you have uh, any any thoughts on this question or comment? Yes. So that's a publication on September five or something like that last year, two thousand nineteen, and um, we also commented on it on our blog, so you can see our response. So um, there. You know, we, have, we are exposed to a, a large audience and a lot of people are um, requesting information and saying like, are we licensed, are we licensed? And everybody can send an email to the FMA and I think they take it very seriously. So they uh, informed us that they will announce something like that. 
uh, on the website because we have not been licensed at that point of time and we could not have been licensed because the laws in the blockchain act had been passed in october and they're in, in place since january this year so there as a, as a blockchain um, service provider or um, somebody working with tokens or anything there had not been any regulation the financial regulations like uh, anything which is in regards to e-money or uh, banking services or so, something like that we're not touching at all um, with any of our products so it was no surprise to us but obviously everybody's asking around it and um, what we'll um, now are planning to do a larger announcements in regards to our licenses um, because we have been already uh, approved um, what is called the grandfathering um, you can say like a pre-approval of, of some of the things we do as a token issuer, as a price service provider, as a token generator, as a custodian, licensed custodian or compliant custodian and so on. So um, these things are kind of um, in this grandfathering mode and um, we are just waiting to get the official registry um, being updated there that we will be also listed uh, at the FMA website with these new laws. So in that regard, it's all stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the new update will be coming. Everything what we currently do on our platform is fully compliant. We also need to do uh, things like uh, due diligence requirements, uh, in German it's called Sorgfaltspflicht, things what, what we uh, certainly have to treat very carefully and which we take very seriously. So um, it's a, in regards to blockchain analytics, uh, KYC, verification, um, everything which goes into anti-money laundering regulation. This is something which everybody as a kind of uh, virtual um, asset service provider um, or company like us needs to take care of seriously. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, is there a place on, this, on the site where people can maybe view the, the license? Mm -hmm. Um, not yet. So there's um, a summary about our trade license, which we which we got uh, back in 2018. So that's kind of the basic one, which gives us um, the opportunity to trade crypto to crypto elements, which we now do with um, kind of converting BTC and ETH to LCX token on our platform. Um, but uh, you know, the, the Liechtenstein jurisdiction, the regulator are overwhelmed with the response um, from applications at the moment. So um, we had been filed very early. We prepared for that and we expanded our compliance team. And um, we hope that soon we will be then um, can will be able to link to these licenses um, to the official website as well. OK. All right. Yeah. So moving on to the next question. Um, okay. Probably one, one comment to it, we ex also explored like before I incorporated LCX, we looked at different other jurisdictions, Estonia, Gibraltar, Malta, um, Singapore, Hong Kong, and, and so on. And I was ready to move everywhere um, as I'm kind of an entrepreneur who gives, who goes all in into that. And uh, I moved to Switzerland only to um, incorporate LCX. And so we believe that the regulation in Liechtenstein is probably the most sophisticated and it might be the, the most exciting jurisdiction as of today, but it differs very much from the other um, licenses you can get. In, in, in other jurisdictions, you can basically pay a basic fee and you get an exchange license, quite simple. Um, in, in Liechtenstein, it's really a process. They are protecting their, their reputation, as I said. It, it took us uh, like months to prepare all the documents. We had to expand a team on the compliance side. We invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in, into the legal of process. And um, so it gives us also a, a quite a tough barrier of entry for other markets, uh, uh, market players. Um, and we are just going through it, you know, um, hustling every day. Um, and uh, yeah, we are updating the community and everything in a very transparent manner. Um, but uh, when I look down the road, like uh, in, in end of this year, a couple of years uh, on the road, this will be really a differentiator. Like if we get it right now, the fundamentals, building the business model, having a successful revenue streams with L6 Terminal, then we have a sustainable business, which we, which we can grow. Okay, all right. What are the other questions? Oh, yes. Yeah, the, the always questions. 
Uh, okay, so next question. Can we have a hint at the companies that are wanting to tokenize their assets on your on your platform? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, let me give you some hints. So we have um, roughly 100 million um, dollars in volume now in our pipeline. So assets like different projects who are, um, would be um, generating token issuings above 100 million uh, easily. Um, and we're just separating on like what, where's the market fit? The project we are looking at really is um, first entertainment area. We have now uh, deep, deep talks with uh, in, in the gaming space. You know, one of our key partners is Animoca Brands. They invested in CryptoKitty. They're doing blockchain gaming in, in, in based in Hong Kong. Super, super experienced team. Yatsui, um, great entrepreneur and close friend since um, a long time. And so we're exploring the opportunities there, going in, in N NFTs or um, even some, some kind of true assets like game licenses, some, something like that, which really gives return to everybody involved in a game. Um, another aspect is we're, we are looking at real estate projects, but also there needs to um, fulfill a certain need. Um, if, it's, if there's like no buyers out there, it doesn't make sense. So we're taking that very carefully. Um, and the third aspect is exciting companies where uh, we are profit, um, tokenizing profit, uh, future profits. And in that regard, we are not looking at the kind of the early stage startup with an open presentation, but really about projects who have real revenues, a great product, where you can not only become token holder um, and gain a return of investment, but you also probably get a great product next to it, or you can buy the product or get a discount or whatever. So these companies are, um, for example, there's one company who does um, over, I think, two and a half million in revenues. Uh, last year, they have a, a sales pipeline filled. It's very profitable, good business, growing to uh, 60 to 80 million in the next couple of years in terms of revenues. So high growth um, opportunity. And we're taking that step by step. But the vision is, would be really to do more and more and then um, probably do one SEO a week or something like that. Okay, now, I mean, so in terms of doing one STO a week, is there is there enough quality to do that in terms of just quality projects or companies? Absolutely. Um, it's when you look at the, at the company space, um, we would take it very like carefully. I think as, as a VC, um, we're looking at thousands of companies and invest in like three, four um, and so, so you need to like select a lot, but in terms of assets which are out there, which are uh, kind of locked to the retail consumers in the mass market, there are plenty of like trillion dollars of opportunities. Um, so this could be um, financial assets which are typically only available to institutional investors and large investors, which could be um, then shared in a kind of a fractional ownership model or tokenizing it. And I think that's where a lot of very interesting uh, investment products will be uh, available. And there, you, you know, the derivatives market is 500 trillion. It's much larger than stock market and, and, and larger than real estate. So um, that's really a big opportunity there. Okay. All right. So moving on to the next question, we are about to wrap up the show probably in about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, okay, so let me let me just go through these questions and try to find a good one. Okay, how do you see the landscape evolving with the incumbent players, Fidelity, Nasdaq, who knows, uh, in the near future, possibly adding digital assets? Is this a threat to LCX? Mm -hmm. So I don't think so. I think every company who's successful in that space um, will, will help us to accelerate our business. So for example, we are supporting other Liechtenstein companies in that space. I think I, I admire them what they've achieved. And um, for example, I heard that some competitors or like so-called competitors 
are not going the compliant route. They kind of cancelled um, their projects in the security tokens. You know, Open Finance did some announcements. Neufund did some some announcements. Um, we didn't hear much about Swarm uh, recently. So, and that's actually sad. So, I'd love to support them because if they're successful, we will be also super successful. So, if um, for example, JP Morgan working on the on the stable coin or has launched a JPM coin, if they would be going into security tokens and things like that, it would really accelerate our growth. And we have an advantage on, on many fronts and um, have been since kind of time-wise, technology-wise and whatever. So it could be a strong partnership with these kind of incumbents and it would help us. Okay, so let's maybe, let's maybe kind of expand on that because people uh, from the comments, Aftab says, uh, who is your competition in the space and what is the competitive advantage you have? Hmm. So the key, uh, okay. Um, as of today with L6 Terminal, kind of key direct competitors, probably Caspian Tech uh, in US who um, built something to go me, I see as a, as a, as a competitor, I see um, Coinigy as well, who just providing this, this user interface. And as explained, that's for us a way of building um, a user base, which is uh, using our platform where we can already create a value. The, the second area where we're competing with is um, token issuing platforms. Um, so there are technology players uh, like Tokeny, there's uh, a Polymath, there are um, players like T0, um, like Open Finance, what else, securitize and, and these guys are like all enabling security tokens to become a reality. Um, and, and there I see them not like they're all competitors. We are going after the same um, goals, um, but it, the market is so big, it will, there will be plenty of space for everybody. And, and the last aspect is the exchange itself, security token exchange. And there we are obviously competing um, with with the ones uh, who are already in the market. So uh, Coinbase uh, might get regulatory approvals to go into security tokens. There's uh, there are the crypto exchanges um, like like Binance, OK, uh, OKX, uh, uh, and so on. Coinless uh, as well, maybe. They're like all exploring some things um, there. And obviously it's, you know, even if they don't serve security tokens or probably will never do in the future, um, they, they, they have crypto assets, interesting assets to invest in. And um, so they, that's kind of this, um, yeah, crypto or digital assets exchange uh, area. We are differentiating ourselves um, strongly with um, the aspects of, first of all, we care about um, our, our community base. We want to deliver good assets, digital assets, which we um, vet in detail, which we uh, go through um, because of diligence to really serve something which works. Um, and the last aspect on the um, is, is probably our jurisdiction um, and the legal aspects we're working on. I think that's uh, where we now have over two years of, of experience uh, with the laws. Um, it really stands out. Liechtenstein to be probably the most exciting jurisdiction at the moment. We are there uh, trying to leverage that. And um, in terms of growth plans, I mean, if other jurisdiction um, will come up with a similar law and, and there's some exploring, it, it might um, be an opportunity for us to, to go there as well. But then we also have an advantage because we've been through um, this kind of uh, process of getting um, a compliant regulated platform up and running. All right, uh, thank you. Okay, all right, so going through the other questions here, let me find a few others. Okay, so we we did uh, have Monty give us a demo of the of the platform. So for those who missed it, just go back into the beginning of the live stream. Uh, okay, let me. Okay. All right. So this question: uh, Can you explain to us more about your partnership? with vector space and smart buckets. Mm -hmm. So uh, vector space is, um, had been referred to us by one of our advisors. 
You know, we have an advisory network, which includes Don Tapscott from the Blockchain Research Institute, Jimmy Wales, uh, founder of Wikipedia, who I just talked to um, earlier this week. And um, so we are leveraging this network tremendously. And David Mickelson, who is a tremendous social entrepreneur running Refugees United, um, they're um, serving a lot of the African community in terms of what they do and basic financial services are not existing there. So they are exploring a lot around blockchain. To come to the point, so their uh, friends or connected or something to, to Vector Space introduced us, we immediately saw a match because Vector Space has a tremendous AI powered tool to create instant smart baskets um, event driven and, and so called, how they call theme investing. What's a smart so basket? A smart baskets, smart baskets. So What's you can that? say, um, for example, um, you can go through any data analy analytics. They do this for stocks already. And we are now building that for L6 terminal that you can say, I want to buy, um, I want to see all tokens who are based in, who have a jurisdiction of Europe. Or um, we can say all tokens who did a token burn last week, um, all tokens where like there had been an AMA or there's an AMA coming up um, or other things. So they have a tremendous um, uh, kind of a good database of um, where they run through the AI tool and then it gives the results um, based on the um, hash um, or, or, or hashtag of the, of the asset. Um, so therefore we can classify that and um, we have announced a partnership and as explained, we're taking our partnership very seriously. Um, we are selectively only working um, with some of the best people in the, in the market. And um, this is like a, this is a strong partner as well, um, where we are now um, in deep discussions on actually make it happen. And we hope that we can bring something to light um, in the next uh, one or two months um for our l6 terminal community okay all right well uh thank you to the audience for asking all those questions uh it was great uh now we do have three other questions we always ask on the show so it's time mm -hmm. to put you in the hot seat <laughs> so uh so so the first question we have for you what are three books that you three books you've read that have changed your life okay so three books. Um, so let, let me think about it. I think, uh, first of all, when I've been young, I always admired entrepreneurs. So I loved the stories around Richard Branson. So Losing My Virginity mm -hmm. was really one of these books which um, opened my mind for entrepreneurship and doing things you love. I think you, you know, you're paid for the amount of pressure you can handle. And that's what I also see here. Like we're working hard to make that happen. So losing my virginity. Second book um, uh, from Neil, Neil Strauss or Neil Strauss, um, mm -hmm. American writer. Um, the book is called Emergency. Emergency mm -hmm. is yeah taking you through how to survive in emergency. Like we know, <laughs> last month had been tough. Um, so I took out the book again. I thought like you're, you're right. Like how to survive in the world, in the, in the woods or something like that. And, and the third one by um, somebody who, who I met at the World Economic Forum, Jubal Harari, um, Israel writer, and he wrote 21 Lessons of, for the 21st Century. Tremendous book uh, for me as being involved as a, as a futurist, really eye-opening as well. All right, thank you for that. Okay, then next question we have for you. Besides family and friends, who are, who are three people in history, past or present, that have inspired you? Okay, three people who inspired me. Um, probably going, going back in, in history um, of my entrepreneurship uh, life, um, I think seeing uh, when we have been there in this um, advertising agency, seeing all the people there, especially the, the, the founder um, of this advertising agency, I already saw like this is, this is something um, which I thought, find very um, interesting and, and inspiring to be an entrepreneur. Um, but then like more recently, I think people who inspired me certainly uh, Yat, Yatsui, uh, one of our partners, Animoka Brands. 
He's an entrepreneur also since the 90s. I know him since over 10 years. He um, brought Animoca brands to um, be traded publicly in the market. He sold previous companies. He's in the board of the BAFTA, the British Film Awards. He's a, a musician and, and, and like very tremendous successful entrepreneur and a good coach for us as well. Another person uh, who I mentioned before, Jimmy Wells, I think um, very inspirational person. Um, and I, it, we have these calls um, from time to time to do an update. And I can tell you, he's blockchain uh, verse, like he's, he's a skeptic. And you know, you need these kind of people who say like, okay, why is it relevant? And that's what we see a lot in the, in the crypto space. They're tokenizing something, but nobody cares. Really. It's, it, it's not something which is bad before. It's not getting better being tokenized. So he's questioning these things. So in, in terms of um, kind of three people, yeah, the kind of this kind of personal friend, uh, entrepreneur um, from the 90s. Yat um, and, and Jimmy Wells, like the, the three which pop up to my mind. Okay. All right. So last question. What are three actions you've taken that have changed your life? Okay. Um, so a uh, first action is probably not something um, it, just one point of time. It's um, I'd been traveling a lot. I visited over 50 countries. We opened up offices um, with, my, with my futurist company in Tokyo, Beijing, uh, New York, headquarters was in New York. Um, I lived in Beijing. So this curiosity, so if you say like one action would be really being open, being curious. Um, I'd been uh, working with musicians, with Donovan um, at this futurist period and and then the investment experience as well. So this curiosity is something which is now super helpful to have. Um, thinking um, out of the box and kind of cross industry, which is now needed um, to build kind of the, the next um, uh, player in the FinTech space, uh, like what we're doing with LTX. Second uh, topic I would say action is go all in in, uh, in LTX really like moving, um, to Switzerland, um, opening up in, in Liechtenstein, working with the government and regulators over there. And I can tell you the time had been super intense. I had been doing a lot of things uh, in, in the past, but it was never uh, that um, focused on something. Here we have a focus where we, we want to deliver on our vision. So the focus is, uh, is one thing. And, um, you know, I've Put a lot of things aside um, besides like friends who, who I have not seen for a long time and um, uh, really focus on building LCX. And, uh, and the third action point is working with the best people in this industry and pick the partners wisely. I, I told you that we also make some mistakes so um, picking partners wisely is, is super important and, um, and another aspect is to it kind of um, fuck average. So really stand out, be tremendous. And um, so if I would sum this up, it's all about love. So with my three actions taken that transform my life, probably curiosity, focus and, and love. Okay. All right, well, uh, thank you for that. Now, where can people learn more about you uh, and your company? So first of all, we are at lcx.com. The, um, it's at LCX on Twitter. We have a Telegram channel. Um, you can also join. Then myself is at Monty Metzger on Twitter. I also have my personal blog, Monty.de in English and, and German. Didn't have time to, to publish so much um, due to focus. But um, yeah, I, I do a lot of Twitter um, usage. You can find me there. All right. Well, Monty, it's a pleasure. And uh, thank you for being here on the show. And if you like this but, interview. Yeah, may I jump in? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. I'd love to uh, ask you a question as well. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I know it's an, it's an interview, but I'm, I'm so curious. Also, for everybody here, like it's the first time we speak. Um, mm -hmm. I, think I, I, I think it's tremendous important what you do with token metrics. Uh, what, what you were building up there um, in terms of bringing transparency to the market. What had been your kind of three um, 
most important actions you take in your career. No, they're not in, in your career. life. Like, in my career. You got in in yeah. crypto, where were, like, where were these turning points? Well, I'll say, I mean, the big turning points, one was quitting my job at IBM, right? So going all into crypto back in 2017. So September 2017, I basically told my boss, because actually my boss was in the process of changing my region, right? Because IBM every six months is basically a restructuring. And it was basically time to restructure again. And I said, you know what? You know what? Let's not even bother, right? Because... I want to go all into crypto, right? Mm -hmm. And and I went all in, haven't looked back. And I think that's definitely been one of the biggest things that really, has really transformed my life. Uh, the other part that's really changed my life, I was in Tokyo, Japan. This was uh, this, this, this was beginning of 2017, January 2017. I was there at the Ritz-Carlton, very tall hotel skyscraper, had the skyline view of Tokyo. And I, and I was there on vacation. And I felt like I was on top of the world and I did, didn't want to leave Tokyo, uh, but, but I had to go back. And I told myself, I'm young, I'm making good money, but I didn't feel like I was in control of my life. I, because at that, moment, at that point in time, despite all the success, somebody else controlled my time. And that's when, I, that's when everything shifted to, it's not just about making money, it's about controlling my time. Yeah, and that's when I basically told myself, you know what, by the end of the year, I'm going to quit my job and become self-employed and really just kind of make my own money and be able to have the freedom to do whatever I want, when I want. And nine months later, I was able to do that and go all into crypto. Um, then the third thing that has really changed my life, I would say, uh, just experimenting. Uh, I've always been an entrepreneur. Uh, I've always dabbled, right? So token metrics is not my first business. This is something I've been doing for, for a while. I've had, I've had other businesses I've tried that some were successful, some some basically failed. But with each business, I always learned something new that I take to the next venture, right? So now with token metrics, this has so far has been, uh, it's basically on pace to be probably the most successful business I've launched, but it didn't just happen overnight. It basically happened from just putting in the work in the last 10 years or so, right? The last 10 to 15 years. So I would say just the compound effect of being an, an entrepreneur, of just testing ideas, of being, uh, having the ability to experiment with lots of different ideas and seeing what sticks and then just kind of trying to learn from each failure. So I would say those are the three actions that have really changed my life. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, excellent. So. Yeah, I, I think a lot of things which really um, is about the, the overall journey of everybody, like finding something you love to work at, the passion and uh, also overcoming challenges and, and, and setbacks. And I, uh, yeah, I, I didn't know much about um, all, your, all your journey, but obviously everybody has um, some, some ups and downs. And I think what is, what is super important if you're like, what I admire about your work is you, you focus, you kind of, um, pivot sometimes on, on things, but um, like building this transparency is super important in the market. So I hope that there are others doing the same. And um, my kind of philosophy is really um, defeat your enemies with success. Mm -hmm. Just do something where you're successful and then... Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, it will pay out. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe and share. This would with your friends, crypto family. Let's go out there and evangelize crypto. With that being said, uh, thank you, Monty. It was a pleasure having you on. And as we like to say, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. Thank you very much. Take care, everybody.